I agree with Patrick Bet David. If you haven't seen in the last 24, perhaps 48 hours, Patrick Bet David has come out and basically said, you don't want lower interest rates. It's kind of like, you know, these are not the droids you're looking for. There are a lot of people out there begging, in, you know, uh, the Fed to pivot. Uh, there are people looking for blackmail on Jerome Powell to make him pivot. And uh, we need to hope that he can hold firm at least till the early part of 2025. And I have the one and only Matt, the mortgage guy uh, on here who actually saw the video as well. And we got to talk about it. Matt, were you shocked that Patrick Bed David came out and said, we don't want lower interest rates? Did that? How did that feel when you when you heard that? Yeah, you know what? Like love and respect Patrick Bet David don't always agree with everything he says. And and sometimes it's just like, you know, you can't be a absolute expert in all industries, but he absolutely hit it spot on. And quite honestly, I sat there and I go, well, shit, like loan officers, realtor friends of mine, we're probably part of the problem where like, you realize what you guys are wishing for? You realize that we're we're all saying, man, lower rates would really help affordability, really help clients. In the back of my mind, knowing that it would be catastrophic for the market, it would really be huge detriment. And the and the crazy part is, I don't know if he said this, but I know this to be true. The people that want it the most are the people that will be hurt the most. Yeah. You know, the lower end where they just get priced out and they cannot be homeowners. If rates went to 5% tomorrow and you're low to median income, you are unable to buy a home in the next 12 yeah. months if rates go to 5% just oh, yeah. because of supply and what that does to prices. Well, and- I, I, would, I would even go one step further. We go back to the nuttiness of over asking all of that. So the, the, the lower end FHA VA buyer doesn't get a sniff. I mean, that's what happened. They were one of 18 offers and a seller is not going to look at a VA FHA offer most of the time. Too many restrictions, too long, yada, yada, yada. And especially if they're not the highest price, right? Because again, if you're paying cash, you can waive appraisal conditions and all of this. So not only if we go to 5%, you can't buy a home in 12 months. I might go on to say you might not be able to buy a home the rest of your life because I think that's the really scary part of Patrick Bet David's thesis is we go back to 5%. Asset values, aka the home, goes up another 40 or 50 percent. You take the average home in America at 400 grand and it becomes 600 grand. The only people winning are the people that own assets. The one percent, the 10, top 10 percent, whatever it is, they they're happy. But you'll never buy a home, not only in the next 12 months. I mean, that video that he put out is frightening. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's it's a it's a reminder as hard as it is to hear, and some people will hear this statement and their brains won't be able to process it, higher interest rates are your friend. Yeah. Higher mortgage rates are your teammate right now. And you do not want it to be any other way. As uncomfortable as it feels in the moment, it's what's best. And I probably didn't think I was going to say that, Mike. A year ago, no, my, you would not have, you my would not 2022 have self is like, who is this guy? Um but, uh, you know, new year, new me, because I understand uh, how it works and, and what it's going to do, like you said, to, to asset prices for people that are, you know, unfortunately, we need a little bit of pain. Yeah, we we need to get through this. And it's funny that Patrick Bet David put out 2025 as the timeline. That's That's what I've been calling for for a while. We just we need 18 months of higher for longer. And then the economy will shake shake it off. We'll get used to the rates. Home builders, folks, might actually build smaller homes. Smaller homes are more affordable, right? We might get some uh, weakness in the economy, maybe some job loss, and we can you know work through that. But yeah, I mean, just playing this out, right? We have no inventory today. Rates go from eight to five, five and a half. All that sideline demand comes on. No new supply, none like maybe 2% more supply and we get bidding wars, waiving conditions. And, you know, fast forward 18 months, we get a 40% pop in real estate price. That's, that's not good for anybody. Right. Right. Like you oh. said, it, 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 it will help a small minority that have a lot of assets, but the last thing Mike no. Zuber wants is no, long you know, term. No, it's terrible. Yeah. 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 The, the separation between the haves and the have nots just becomes an un, un a chasm you can't get cross. And that's, 
that's just not good, man. We need this hire for longer to kind of kind of bring them, you know, the middle along. It's just wow, it was crazy. So I want to pose a question to you because I'm curious. This is this is a question I, I <clears throat> ask myself quite often. Mm. What what is the play for the home buyer who's on the edge, right? They make yeah. 130,000 combined income and they've saved, they got 5% down and, the, and they're trying to buy a house in, in a market where, you know, it's 500 grand entry level, $3,800 a month mortgage payment, maybe even more. <clears throat> um, what's, what's the play? What's the answer for them? I, I don't think the play is any different for a home, first time home buyer or an investor. You need to know your buy box and you should be writing aggressive offers. If that was me, I would write no offers at 500. I know at 500, you're approved. I know you've been outbid before, but the market's different. If that was me and I wanted a first time home and my kid needed to be in school and this is the school district and all the stuff I've been through, that's why we bought the house in 99. It's because Teresa was getting ready to go to school. We wanted to be in a good school district. I mean, that was the exact reason. And we stayed there until she graduated for that exact reason. Um, I would probably be writing offers at like 450 to 465. Right, the seller's going to know my rates are high, so I'm going to take off the purchase price. And so I'm going to probably write 465. I'm going to ask for two points in seller concessions, and I'm going to make sure all the repairs are done in escrow. I'm going to put as much as I can on the seller, and I would expect most sellers to tell me to f off. But you know what? All of them won't. There will be one <laughs> that says I want out, and that would be the one I would close on. So that my advice doesn't change. It's hard. It takes work. The market sucks. But go get yourself a great deal at 8%. They're out there. You just have to believe. I would not pay list price. That much I guarantee you. Yeah, I I love it. And I agree wholeheartedly. I, I think it might have been on the hub call. We talked about price discovery. You want to know if a seller is willing to come down in price, fire at them, right? Fire at them 460. If, if they're unwilling to budge, they'll tell you, you know, great real estate agents too in this market are going to have to do more work more conversations, more digging around, more finding the motivated versus the, you know, I'm going to hold on and sell it 480 or not sell it at all. Like you're going to discover that stuff by taking action. I promise you, it doesn't appear. It's not listed for 500. And then a big clearance sign comes up like it's Walmart and they're trying to get it off the shelf 460, right? It's interactions. It's, it's professionals out there doing the work. The yeah. buyer is doing the work. The real estate agent is doing the work. They're talking to a mortgage professional who's helping them do the work, figure out numbers that make sense for them. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to a market in which uh, it's going to be harder, but for, for the buyers that do the work, it's going to be worth it. Well, Redfin, I actually had a quote that I would, you know, I applaud them for. And he says uh, it was on, what is today? Today's Wednesday. So it was Monday. Redfin article said, um, buyers are in control. I agree. If you're a buyer today at these rates, you're in control. So if you are in control, use the leverage. I would not, I got to say it again. I would not be writing any offers at asking price. The sellers can tell me no, don't care. There's always another seller. That's, I, I would be very aggressive today. Yeah. And, and, and the funny thing that I see from people is they look at something and it's priced at 500 and it's been on the market for 33 days. I immediately tell them if they were going to get 500, they would have got it by now. Yeah, the exactly. price is not five hundred. It's not. It's so, now. The now we have price discovery. To your point, where do you go? Yep, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I love it, man. It's game time for buyers. Go game go uh, to greatmortgagebroker dot com and fill out the form and let's let's get you rolling. Yeah, and again, figure out you got to have a mortgage broker is going to run multiple scenarios, multiple options for you. Make sure you maximize the goodness for you as a buyer and get all you can from the seller. Now is the time. One more time, Matt, where do they go? Greatmortgagebroker.com. Thank you, buddy.